Hi, welcome to another episode of Montana Shares, your opportunity to find out about the nonprofits that make our state great. I'm your host, Bill Crane. Today I have Kelsey and Gina from the Lewis and Clark Humane Society. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Thank you for having us. Oh, you bet. So we're going to dive into the spaghetti dinner event coming up here shortly, but let's go ahead and just talk about the shelter and what you guys are up to, how's the population doing, things like that. Well, we had kind of a nice uh, uh, fall in, into winter and early uh, uh, beginning of the year mm -hmm. and we were wondering where all of the dogs were because we were sitting around with a lot of empty kennels but mm -hmm. not so anymore <laughs> they've started to fill in and and uh, so we've got quite a few available for adoption and uh, kitties much the same way okay and yeah. is this the regular time for kittens and dogs or oh. have they just been hiding out all winter no we'll start seeing our kittens and usually you know it's about the end of may that we start seeing all of our kittens come in mm -hmm. and last year what we did is we had everybody in foster care and uh, so that helped a lot with sickness in room at the shelter you know because poor those poor kittens you know without getting vaccinations yet mm -hmm. and being too young they get pretty they can get sick pretty quickly so we depended on a lot of foster families to take care of those kittens and it worked out great absolutely wonderful mm -hmm. last year good oh yeah I don't think I could ever do that. By the time I fostered them, they'd be mine. We have a lot of failed fosters, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> but at least it's sort of successful at the other end of the spectrum. Yeah, exactly. Replaced. Exactly. Something that we don't usually have very often is puppies. So we've actually got a few puppies that are going to be uh, becoming available um, in a couple weeks. They are right at about six weeks now, aren't six they? Six weeks. Mm -hmm. And so um, we will be having, you know, puppies here so, uh, available really, really soon. We'll have They're kennels cute. of cuteness. <laughs> yeah, so we don't. Cute. We do not get them very often. So, yeah. you know, when they, when they finally come in. Oh, just a mixed breed. Just we came mixed. off of the Blackfeet Indian Reservation. Somebody had okay. asked for some assistance. We have the mama dog, and she's absolutely adorable. And those puppies are pretty cute. They're kind of a brindle and black. Mm -hmm. Sounds so, great. Yeah. Medium yeah. to large sized dogs. Yeah. Okay. But I'm they're they're wonderful. Always a fan of mixed breeds. They seem like they have so much better longevity and health than your purebreds. Exactly. So we've exactly. always had mixed breeds and they go yeah. last one's eighteen years old before it was oh, lost yeah. or and the current one's like mm -hmm. thirteen. So yeah. I'm a firm believer in mutts. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well we really love the uh, native dogs, you know. Mm -hmm. They just are very resilient and sturdy and just have a really good soul. Not that any of the other dogs don't, but you know, mm -hmm. these guys seem to be surviving, you know, the uh, uh, up there in Browning, you know, it can be kind of tough. You know, well, on the what was the snowfall this well, year, too? Wasn't that <laughs> yeah, amazing? Yeah. Amazing yeah. snowfall. So, yeah. yeah, I can imagine them having to be resilient. Yeah, so we don't have as many as we usually get from there, but uh, this was an owner surrender, so it was nice to have them. Good, excellent. Able to help out. Okay, let's talk about the poster on the table. That's sort of like the elephant in the room, isn't it, or something? Kelsey, you're up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're headed <laughs> into our 16th annual Spaghetti Dinner, mm -hmm. and we're super excited about it. It's on April 1st, and we're 90% of the way sold out. And this is, sells out every year, right? It gets really close really every close year, spring. really okay. close. But yeah, it tip we typically sell out. So we are really excited. We are selling tables for um, that seat eight for three hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and then individual tickets are twenty five dollars an individual. And if I recall correctly, you're a new venue this year. Is that a correct statement? We are. Okay. We're really excited to be at the fairgrounds this year okay. because that way we'll have better parking, more mm -hmm. space in between tables. We'll be able to have you know some additional people in there as well. More auction items, more live auction items. It's just going to be a lot of fun. Just mainly more space. Yeah, yeah. mainly more space. Because <laughs> have you ever been? I never have. It's I, By the time oh, I think about it, it's already sold out or something. <laughs> you have to come, but it's so crowded. And so we've heard a lot of relief about the fact that we're going to be in a bigger venue. Mm -hmm. Everybody will get a little bit more elbow room. So since I haven't been there, what is what is the event? What's it like? It's a super fun dinner that we show a slideshow of the animals. Mm -hmm. And then we roll right into a program about what's happening at the shelter. And then we do um, some kind of, you know, ask um, to fundraise for the Humane Society. We do mm -hmm. a live auction, a silent auction, um, and it's just having fun and, you know, celebrating animals and supporting animals. Mm -hmm. Do you get to have some animals running around with the food and stuff, or do they have to stay home? No. We don't. <laughs> oh, yeah, they God. have to stay home because we're serving food, but we <coughs> do have plenty of them on huge screens this okay. year. We have brand new big screens that were donated, so we're really excited to show cute, you know, kitten and puppy pictures in a huge size. Okay. 
Uh, objects in the, the mirror, the, not the mirror, but in the, per, the screen are bigger than they are in real life <laughs> yeah, or whatever. Right, yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh -huh. So just a good, fun evening, basically. It is. It's a real family event, mm -hmm. which is what's been really nice. And the history part of it is, is that it originally started with the, um, our staff. Uh, one of our, our gals on the staff said, hey, how about if we do a dinner? And I remember her mother cooked made the cakes and all of that. And the first year we made $3,000 and man, we thought we were really rolling in dough. Mm -hmm. We had one table that had auction items and like maybe five live auction items. So, you know, in that 15 years, the staff has raised over $500,000 through the spaghetti dinner. Mm -hmm. And so we're awfully proud of that, you know. So not only right. are they working their tails off, literally at the shelter, but they are also fundraising, you mm -hmm. know, so it's, uh, mm -hmm there really uh, has a good buy-in at our shelter that we're a really great team. Great. Any fun auction items that you want to mention to come to mind that you want to own? Oh, there's, yeah, there's <laughs> so many. We, um, one of our live auction items is a Haunted Helena tour with Ellen Baumler mm -hmm. and dinner at the Montana Club beforehand and then mm -hmm. a tour train. Um, we also have a couple of great vacations. We have a Glacier gift card um, for $700 to Glacier that includes, and then we have some rafting that we've put with it. Um, a night at the Sacagawea Inn mm -hmm. Hotel, and then we also have soaking um, tokens from Norris Hot Springs and Great combination. Lewis and Clark Caverns tickets. So just like really fun staycations, vacations, items. We have a gorgeous handmade wooden cat tree that, mm -hmm. that it's just beautiful. I stayed down at Sacagawea just a couple of weeks back, and if people haven't been there, they need to go. That renovation is phenomenal. It's a beautiful place to stay and not that I ever talk about it but the linens are supposed to be really good I <laughs> take my wife's word for it <laughs> yeah. it's just a fun stay and then and then you are just a hop skip it and jump away from Norris and uh, so yeah definitely yeah, sounds like a fun one stuff. so yeah yeah. And then, you know, a lot of, uh, we depend on the community. They do some tremendous donations. You know, Forest is for the silent auction. And all of our businesses, you know, have just been absolutely wonderful in sponsorships and um, in uh, uh, donating things for our, our silent auction. You know, so uh, Helena is such a giving, giving There's community. There's no doubt about it. And no about uh, it. they have been such great supporters of the Lewis and Clark Humane Society. We're so ever grateful for that. Good. Anything else we need to add? Um, come out else? and have a great time. Is that what it all boils yes, down to? Yes, yeah. yeah. Come out, call the shelter beforehand and get your tickets before the night of, just in case we're going to sell out, um, and then join us. It's just a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. That's a simple enough takeaway message, right? Yeah, we have volunteers who serve, and, you know, it's really a lot of fun. And uh, last year we ran a little over, you know, and, and whatnot, but it's going to be very short and concise this year, you know, as far as program goes, and mm -hmm. in and out and have fun, you know, so... Yeah, it's a great time. Good. Okay, I hear something about renovations going on out there. Let's talk about that. Yeah, we are. Um, we had, um, about a year ago, um, we had a, a gal from uh, the uh, ASPCA, and mm -hmm. she's a veterinarian for there, and she kind of travels around and um, comes and takes a look at uh, shelters and to see, you know, how we're operating, if they could uh, uh, make encourage us to have improvements, rate, make recommendations. None mm -hmm. of it is, is mandatory or anything like that. So um, she came in and she had a lot of insight into how to improve our shelter, especially for health issues. Mm -hmm. And so um, part of her recommendations uh, were presented to the board and we decided that we would go through, go, go forth with this. And with that ASPCA um, uh, recommendation came a grant for uh, instituting these renovations. That's so good combination. I know, <laughs> I know. So um, we were delighted to receive, uh, I think it was fifty-nine thousand two hundred dollars for mm -hmm. doing renovations, and most of it uh, was uh, uh, standard vet practices. What is it? best care practices mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, and so you know it was looking at how do we improve uh, so that we're not transmitting diseases from animal to animal well mm -hmm. you know and a lot of the shelters are very old and and so you know if we had a state-of-the-art building we would build specifically for that improvement in air mm -hmm. exchanges so here we have a very old building and so um, we're working on trying to maintain it and keep it up to uh, reasonable standards until we do actually build a new facility. So that included putting barriers up between kennels so that there's no nose-to-nose -nose contact and coughing, you know, when they have a sneeze or whatever that we can contain it better. 
Um, the other thing is making our uh, open cat room a little bit smaller into two or po two pods versus one open cat room and limiting the number of cats that we put in there. And so um, in each of those pods, we'll have probably five and five. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea is, is that if that pod gets sick, it's easier to take care of five cats than it would be for 25 cats if they mm -hmm. were all in that area. So um, it's uh, keeping it health-wise ha health uh, better, um, trying to isolate better. Um, you know, some of the diseases that we fought last year were distemper, and that's mm -hmm. something that we don't see, that we haven't seen in years and years and years, but all of a sudden, you know, it's making a comeback, and that's, you know, a variety of different things, you know, obviously unvaccinated animals, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's just, it's, it's happening. So we did get hit with that pretty hard last year, so we're trying to be very careful you know, mm -hmm. about how we do it. And so we have a vet who sits on our board of directors who advises us as well. And um, one of the things is, is that we're not taking animals from so far away. You know, we had taken some from Arizona and obviously Korea and whatnot. And their mm -hmm. recommendation was, is, you know, help people, but help within um, our area so that it's not quite such a distance for them to travel because that causes a stress factor which in increases their health issues. So, okay. you know, it's just some best practices that we are um, uh, instituting there at the shelter. And, you know, change is hard, you yeah. know, for everybody because it has been kind of a learning curve for, we've been doing a lot of things. One of the things that I think really killed us was the fact that we always had um, cats, roaming, free roaming cats. Mm -hmm. we, we can't do that anymore. So we had to rehome all of our house cats. And that really hit, you know, we were very sad about that, but it made sense to us, you mm -hmm. know, to do that. So, you know, just improvements along those lines whereby we're, we're um, having a more healthy environment for our animals. So what do you do if you need a cat fix? Do you go into one of the pods now or something since there's no free roaming yeah, felines? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much, you know, and okay. then with the kittens coming in, you know, pretty soon we'll get those cuddles and, and whatnot. But yeah, we're not really changing that uh, open cat room environment too much, just limiting the number of cats in there and creating a glass door so that there's two pods Good. in there. So yeah, just some improvements in, uh, and definitely we're all about, you know, health care and mm -hmm. trying to do the I'll best that we down. can, you know, with herd management, it's very difficult to keep everybody healthy, you know, so mm -hmm. if one one animal brings it in, then the odds are it's gonna it can spread to somebody else. So we just want to be very very careful. Good. So any other news that is news? <sighs> I don't think so. I don't Spring think so. is here. We've got cute puppies. Yeah. We've got spaghetti dinner yeah. April first, and you've got some renovations to keep the place as healthy as yeah. possible. We have a really fun uh, program that we're doing right now. It's called Loot or Lose, and it's a online uh, fundraiser for the Humane Society. Kel or, uh, Kelsey came up with it, and um, it's pitted um, board of directors and staff into two teams with mm -hmm. a combination of both directors and staff. And um, the loser has to spend the night at the shelter. Mm -hmm. And right now, uh, I'm on the team that is not winning. And so it looks like I'm going to be sleeping with the puppies here pretty soon. So <laughs> the hardship um, of it all. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, crowd rise, loot or lose, L C H S, loot or lose. lose. You know, if people are interested, you know, uh, Google that. And there's two teams: the Jack Sparrow. What are they? Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. Sparrow. Mm -hmm. And then the barking. Barking buccaneers. buccaneers. We're so competing. We, I'm the barking buccaneers. So donate to that. They're like. Which team they're like three thousand um, dollars ahead of us. <laughs> yeah, and we're ahead. Yeah. Yes. We're probably gonna win. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So anyway, it's all for a good cause and right now we're over fifteen thousand dollars that we've raised for the shelter. And that's just, you know, by uh, networking mm -hmm. yeah. uh, peer to peer. So good. it's been it's great. So it's been a, a fun event. Excellent. Next year we'll do more. We'll include even more people in, in the whole thing. So Do you guys just sit around and look at words that can use spade yes. and, and yeah. <laughs> all these types of things? And it could and be a full-time job for somebody at the shelter. I'm always amazed at how innovative these phrases are. Yeah, yeah. you know, we have uh, a couple of people that we always go to, you know, that uh, ha are really good at, at using some of those, you know. Um, the other thing was is our furry friends and then what the theme of our uh, spaghetti dinner is funding their future. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and that's and it's is it 
furcher. <laughs> you should be furcher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, you know, it's, it's sustaining, you know, mm -hmm. is what we're looking for in monthly donors. Um, because that's, you know, uh, the day-to-day -day and all of the monthly giving is, you know, what helps with our cash flow and all of that. So, right. yeah, we're always looking for something. Excellent. Well, yeah. I'm glad you guys are doing the great job you're doing out there and keeping all of our furry friends healthy. And thanks for coming on well, today. Thank you. Have yeah, a great wonderful time. day and have a wonderful event coming up here on April 1st. Yeah, thank you. You need to come. Okay, yeah. I'll work on it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in. And you know April 1st is the spaghetti dinner. And um, have a great evening. <laughs>